Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another video. So we're continuing on with the main menu and if we come to the void update, we already have the code that's going to detect what type of controller we have attached. However, we also need some code in the void update to handle our controller inputs while we're in the main menu itself. So we're going to do this by coming here. So after this close bracket, just before the last one, and we're going to come here and we're going to say if, we'll open and close brackets, we'll come inside. And what we want is main menu, and it's the vertical input timer. And we're going to say greater than zero. Let's get that into the comments. So we'll say if vertical input timer is greater than zero, we'll come here. We'll say underscore main menu vertical input timer. And then we're going to reduce it and we're going to say minus equals and we'll just say 1f for now. We may need to experiment with this value. Times time dot delta time. We can close that line off into the comments. We'll say then reduce vertical input timer. And then we'll come here. So why do we have a timer for the inputs and the reason is quite simple without a timer delay for our inputs within the main menu this is what this if block is going to be used for then when we press down let's say to move from one player game to options it's going to cycle through so quickly the main menu would be unusable so what we do is introduce a delay and that's what we're going to use the input timer for. So I hope this will make sense to you all but um, if any of you do have any questions as always please leave them in the comments below and I will try my best to answer. And then we're going to create two more if blocks. We're going to say if We'll open and close brackets again. Inside the brackets, we want input dot get axis. We'll open and close brackets again. Now, inside the brackets, a couple of speech marks. And we're going to say vertical. And then we're going to come here between the closed brackets. We're going to say a greater than symbol. 0f double and and then we want underscore selected button double equals 0 let's get this into the comments and we'll put if input equals vertical and yeah, we'll put in brackets the positive. And then we'll come to the end and say unselected button equals zero. We'll come to the next line and we'll say return. We'll close that line off into the comments. We'll put then do nothing and return and what we're going to do is copy this if block and we'll come to selected button double equals and we'll change this to two we also need to change this to a less than sign we'll change the comment here to a negative input and we just say to equals two. 
So let's go over these two lines now. How do these work? Well, it's quite simple. So this is to handle our delay. We've already gone through that. Now, a selected button will be the top button in the main menu. And at least for now, selected button 2 will be the lowest button. And as I said, we will be coming back to the main menu and adding different buttons for different features. But um, I want to get something up and running in-game before we come back and add all these little features that will really give the game polish. So... This just, these two blocks stop us from moving out of the button range. We can't go up more than the top button and we can't go down more than the bottom button. And what we're going to do is come here between the two and we're going to say if, we'll open and close brackets again inside the brackets, we'll say import and yeah, we'll type it out again. Dot get axis. We'll open and close inside the brackets. And again, it's going to be vertical between the close brackets, greater than zero f. And now we have to handle the imports for the other button, which is button one. So underscore selected button double equals one now we're going to come to the end of the line and we're going to open and close brackets again and this is because we're going to do more than one thing inside of here so in the comments let's put if import equals vertical and again it's of type positive and selected button equals one let's come inside this brackets and we're going to say if open and close brackets inside the brackets we're going to say underscore main menu and it's the vertical input timer is greater than zero so it's still counting down to zero which means the delay is in effect. So let's put that into the comments. So we'll say if vertical input timer is, and we want greater than zero, we'll come to the next line and we can just copy one of these return lines. So this happens when we try and move too quickly inside the main menu but if we're not trying to move too quickly then we can do something so we'll just enter there and we'll put underscore main menu vertical input timer let's reset that by making it equal to the underscore and we want main menu and it's the vertical input delay so let's get that into the comments make vertical input timer equal to input delay so once we've actually reset that and uh, forgive me i just forgot to close the line off there so let me just get rid of these empty lines and then we'll enter there and we'll put selected button equals zero just the one equal sign here so if the selected button is one which means the middle button and we're trying to move up which is what get axis is greater than zero first we make sure if there should be a delay or not. If there should be a delay, then we do nothing and return. Otherwise, let's reset the input timer and then make the selected button equal the top button. So we've actually moved to the next button using our controller. And let's get that into the comments. And we'll just say, and selected 
button equal to zero. In fact, I'll put and make, and let me just, I will have to adjust the comments in this script now, but so I'll do that off camera. And I'm going to put the comment of else in this blank line here. So let's copy this now. So make sure you copy the whole block, including that last close bracket. And we'll just have to tab that comment across. And again, if selected button equals two this time, so it's bottom, we've selected, which in this case will be the quit button, but we're trying to maybe move upwards this input to select one of the other buttons. So that's what we do. And of course the next one from two, we count down. So we'll make selected button one. And we'll just alter the comment there. And that's all we need to do for moving up the main menu, moving up the buttons. And then we'll handle moving downwards. So we can still copy one of these blocks. We'll just need to make a few more changes. So first thing we'll do is tap that across. And we need to change this to a less than. So we're basically moving the analog stick on the controller down. And we'll change this to negative because that's how it registers a down input. It, when the analog stick is not being moved, it has a value of zero. Push up and the value increases. Push down and the value decreases. So we'll say select button zero. So we're on the top button. We'll change the comment there. All the rest can be the same. And in this case, because we're moving downwards, we're counting up. So that can remain as button one. And that is all we need to change in that block. So let's just copy it. We'll paste it in below. Again, we'll tap this across. And selected button equals one this time. So we're in the middle button, we have the middle button selected, but we're pressing down on the analog stick. So we need to move up to selected button two. And let's just change that comment there. So we'll save that off. And as always, this will not work until we have the rest of our GUI filled out. But we shall be doing that in our next lesson and then we can actually begin to test out this script. So I think we'll leave it here for this lesson. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you next time. And until then, as always, bye for now.